In today's episode of the Photo Nerds podcast, we give away some of our favourite landscape photography locations. We also talk about animals that want to eat you. Is this gibbering part of the start Probably, of the new yeah. one? <laughs> it generally ends up being that. <laughs> we're, we're gibbering about technicalities about of shooting multi- podcasts, aren't we? I, yeah, I took it as a bit of a compliment, though, when someone said who's in charge or who's behind the camera or something. Yeah, yeah. between the shots. I know, yeah. that's it. Yeah, and then the other comment about uh, 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 the subpar camera angles <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. from another comment. You think, mm. yeah, all right. Yeah, I put you can a new, do I, it. I, I, one of the videos I did the other week, I put a, a different camera angle in. I was just having a generally bad day when I was filming in my office. Yeah. And I couldn't talk properly. So I, I saw it. So I put a, oh, no, yeah, a side camera angle on just so I could cut between it a bit easier so it looked yeah. fairly seamless. So I kept, I was stuttering my way through it. Um, I normally do it in a, relatively in one take, but I was having a bad day. So it took a bit. So I put that in anyway. And then someone gets, I had loads of negative comments about it mm. saying, I don't know, it was cliche or whatever. And it I used to be I've the seen, norm, but it looks odd now. I've done the same thing with mine. Mm. And the first thing my daughter said, Dad, what are you doing? What my dad, what my daughter said. You know, I was considering... I think it was too tight, that's why... I was considering doing it with my GoPro and setting that up as a separate one. Uh, but after what you two are saying, maybe well, I did it on the I did it on the Masterclass and I think it looked really good because I, I had it on the second camera yeah. on the slider mm. at a fairly wide angle, but I used that camera there with, I think, with that lens on. So it was a, the shot was a bit too tight and it wasn't moving either. So, mm. But I... Um, I saw a thing with Ron Howard not so long ago, and he was doing it. Who? Ron Howard. The oh, yeah, sorry. He was talking, said Howard. They had a second shot on him. Yeah. It looked great. So I thought, if it's good enough for Ron Howard, it's good enough for me. Yeah, because Ron Howard's got a face for audio just like me, hasn't he? <laughs> That's where he wears that. He's, like, he's an inspiration. Well, clearly it wasn't hey, good Ron Howard. Ron Howard's uh, one of my uh, biggest inspirations. Yeah, I, I was watching, uh, uh, you know, the James Hunt and Nicky Lauder film, yeah. Rush. Yeah. Uh, I might have mentioned it <laughs> before, but uh, and I just love that film because yeah. I, I just love uh, the way Ron Howard, uh, Ron Howard's cinematography comes across. Yeah. Same as Spielberg, you know. I mean, Apollo 13, just the yeah. way that shot and the mood it creates yeah. is amazing. Yeah. He's a genius, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, him and Spielberg. Not a fan of George Lucas, but... Um, well, they're all mates, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, what were we talking about? Talk I, just about talk I just had a good idea. I don't know if you were there. But oh, that'll die lonely. <laughs> <laughs> you what, mate? That'll die lonely. Adam's had a good idea. <laughs> let's, let's see, shall we? <laughs> yeah, go on in. I, I, I wanted to talk just a bit about photography locations. Okay. Because I had a comment the other week about um, people not feeling very inspired about the landscape that they live in. I think there's a, there's a mixture of things. I think... I find any landscape inspiring, including cities and stuff. Like I think if you if you don't have a love of nature, you're going to struggle with landscape photography a little mm. bit. But just doing any sort of photography, sit, street, anything that's outside, basically, I think people are always looking for inspiration around locations, aren't they? Including me. Mm. So I just wanted to pick your brains, really, find out what your favourite locations are and any stories you've got from any calamities you've got from... I'm, I'm, doing, I'm, doing that, I'm doing that on purpose. I'm yeah. just thinking about this is the one good idea you've had. <laughs> I seem to have a calamity everywhere I go. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, I know what you mean. There are a lot of people that will comment and they'll say, oh, if only I lived where you live. And we are incredibly lucky, our location. East Coast, an hour and a half away. West Coast, an hour and a half away. Lake District's an hour and a half away. Peak District's an hour, hour and a half yeah. away. And Snowdonia and various other places. We are very, very lucky. But it, just, it, to be, just to clarify, the Lake District's about three hours away from where I live. Is right? it? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe it's a bit further than where I think I would be in. I drive, it's two, it's two I, hours I, from I, here. I, I do drive yeah, fast. It's a couple of hours, yeah. 65 from Leeds, though, is a nightmare. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. As a crow flies, it's not that bad. But, uh, but um, I mean, there are plenty of shots to be had, and, and that's something I hopefully will try and do if I get a bit more time, is to go to these locations that maybe aren't people struggle to get inspired with and see if I can find something, because I'm sure there's something there. But location point wise for me, uh, Peak District is on, on my is that, your favorite? is that your number one it's spot? It's not my for number one spot. My number one spot is the Lake District, right. I would say. The reason is, 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 is Scotland's awesome, but every time I seem to go to Scotland, it rains and rains and rains and rains <laughs> and rains. And then it doesn't for half an hour and then it rains. But where That's the, the lake... of Scotland. Though. We were talking about shooting in bad weather last week, weren't we? Yeah, but there's bad weather in bad weather. And it's absolutely... <laughs> peeing it down and it's grey skies and it's blowing a gale. I, I've done... V- four or five vlogs from Scotland that just didn't go out because, what was that? The camera going off. 
That's bound to be Nick on. That sounded canon. Oh no, me. here's the test. Nick on or canon? No, that's canon, it is. Canon? Yeah, I know that sound anyway. Why has that gone off then? Canon cameras, should we just continue? Carry on, yeah, what was the saying? Uh, you're talking about raining in Scotland. Yeah, it rained in Scotland, that's it. And uh, it's ruined about four or five logs uh, because I tried my best, but yeah. there was rain on the lens and various other things. And it just got to the point that uh, uh, the, vlog, the vlogs were ruined and I didn't get any shots. The thing about the Lake District is uh, um, whilst you get bad weather and it can be in for days, often the weather will be changeable and you can go and shoot there and you can shoot yeah. all day. And then it's got the more intimate stuff that you can shoot, such as the rivers and the, the bridges and stuff like that. So that's my favourite location. But the one I shoot most regularly is, to be honest, in the Peak District. Is that it, closest to you? It's that- closest to me. It's about 20 minutes away. 15 20 minutes away I'm from the border of the Peak District yeah. but I grew up in Glossop so I know the Peak District like the back of my hand because right. in my mountain biking days and my cycling days that's where I spent most of my time maybe you'll have to we'll have to go out there then because I just I still haven't fallen in love with the Peak District the Peak District it's just, it, it, it works well with a certain type of shooting um, uh, it hasn't got your glorious big vista shots uh, what I mean by that of course it has but you, you've you not got your mountain ranges and stuff like yeah. that in your background so I went up to Kinder Scout yeah. I, enjoy, I, I really enjoyed that it's a nice little round sort of circular water Kinder Scout's one of those things that it can be beautiful in the rest of the Peak District you've got Kinder Scout and it's blowing and it's yeah. foggy I mean it uh, was it was, a ba- it was a very changeable day but it was one of my favourite days I've had for quite a while actually because there was bad weather there was I had a quite a nice sunset in the end as well so it was but the, the Peak District is one of those reasons, one of the main reasons why I bought a wide-angled lens. Right. So my 15 to 35 lens is the one. What some of those rock formations? And it, stuff? It, 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 the foreground element makes a lot of the shots. Yeah. Uh, and your leading lines make a lot of the shots as well because the background element isn't going to be the dominant part of the shot. So there are lots of uh, millstones and rock formations. You've got Stanage Edge and you've got Curb Edge and all the different, yeah. different uh, rock formations. So you're always going to look for dominant foreground with anything in the Peak District. Yeah. Uh, but it's got everything. It's got it's got your woodland. It's got reservoirs. It's got bridges. It's yeah. got streams. I mean, Padley Gorge is a really uh, 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 nice place for people to shoot in autumn. But there's another uh, uh, brook very close to Padley Gorge, which is which is gorgeous as well. And the actual reservoirs, which is Lady Bow Reservoir and then Howden Reservoir, you, there's a little lane that runs up the sides of them, and right. you could literally spend two days in that location yeah, but you're, you're, you're not going to get your big vista shots though you'll have to take me though because i've there's a few occasions i've had more recently where it's just starting to click a little bit with mm. the big districts but before that it never it never did really mm. um, i mean I, I took gary to, to to lady bower and howard and he was somewhat underwhelmed because he's used to his his, his um you know, Snowdonia and oh, stuff I think like you that. Made, you nearly wrote my car off. I nearly wrote your car off. I wasn't even with you. <laughs> he put a hole through his radiator. <laughs> Let's meet to this particular place. So when I was driving to this particular place <laughs> that was in the back and beyond, <laughs> this great big rock, boosh, straight into my radiator. How did the, what, the rock jumped out into you? Well, obviously when I drove over it, yeah. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> yeah. you know, me and Gary look like we, we don't like each other when we're going shooting. But we're was, going that mate, for the, was that revenge for the zoo? <laughs> it was before. Oh, it was, was before, it? That, yeah. That's, why he, that's yeah. why he chose the zoo. Yeah, yeah. I'll get my own back. Yeah. But my, my, my woodland series that I've done that was that was uh, in, at Lady Bower and uh, and then Wyoming Brook, which is near Padley Gorge, and um, then you've got your um, um, your bigger vista shots, but they're never going to be Lake District big vista shots. No. And then Snowdonia, I think, is absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful, but every time I go to Snowdonia, it never stops raining. <laughs> I'm well camping there this yeah. year. Are you? Yeah, really looking forward to that. <laughs> 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 who are we going to ask next where, what's your have you got any well have you I was going to say have you got any kind of international destinations you'd like to go to or you've been to or? Um, I've been lucky that in the past I've been I, I, I'm relatively well travelled mm. so there's nobody nowhere that's actually screaming to me but I said to to Gary a lot of people shoot Namibia and they shoot Namibia for a reason mm. <laughs> but uh, I've been to Morocco when I was a kid but never went out to sand dunes and it's a little bit closer and a little bit more convenient and uh, I think sand dunes and Morocco uh, would be uh, mm. high on my list of destinations 
And you... then if it wasn't, sorry to interrupt okay. you, and then, and then I'll finish and I'll be quiet. Um, and, and then um, Italy and the Tuscan Valleys, uh, uh, inspired by the likes of Charlie Waite and, mm. and, and the images that he's took in those locations. Because I love uh, uh, how he uses light in his shots and mm. so do a lot of the good landscape photographers and in those valley locations it is all about light and contrast of colours sorry Gary we don't know I'm done what you done I'm done were you on that podcast that Paul and I discussed and I mentioned about you never see anybody vlogging from anywhere like Tenerife or Ibiza yeah I think we talked about it. yeah oh were you on that yeah. okay right, right right I think so no because I was going to mention it because you can get flights really cheap out to there and you probably find it you could go somewhere like that and spend a couple of days with a, a, a tent cheaper than travelling way, way up yeah, north. Probably. Are you happy sleeping in a tent? I mean, you're 10 years older than me. You, you're out in tents. Oh, <laughs> yes, an adventure. Mm. You never grow old for adventures, do you? Oh. I think he's suggesting you get too old for a tent. No, 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 no. You get too big for a tent. <laughs> well, I used to do a lot of wild camping and... Um, I, I, I'm going wild camping again in the next couple of weeks and I'll likely vlog it, but... Uh, Where are you it's, going? It's, don't know. We were, I, I, I'm thinking of going... Oh, not Sprinkling Town. The one above Blee Town. Side Pike. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, above Side Pike. Yeah. It's that town. I'm thinking of going there. It'll come to me. But uh, again, as I say, I'm not a proper landscape photographer because I forget all the locations. Because... <laughs> 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 uh, I've... The, the Lake District is so famous, isn't it? Like it's, you know, it's one of those locations that everybody wants to visit. And I think it's all that sometimes to the detriment to some of the other national parks. So having having grown up in the North York Moors, essentially, which is a national park, it's huge. Mm. Uh, and there's so much to shoot. You've got the, the Yorkshire coast, you've got the, the Moors, you've got the Heather, you've got some hills as well, like Rosebury Topping and some of the Cleveland Hills. It's just got such a variety of things to photograph that you can spend a week there easily. Mm. So is that one of your favourite areas to shoot? Absolutely, yeah. So See, that's it. interesting because you love that and that very, very much mirrors, except you haven't got the coastline, the Peak District. Yeah. So the North York Moors, yeah. the, uh, it's even, it's ever so slightly it, I think I, I, I feel like the Pennines has a slightly different feel to it yeah. uh, than, than the Moors because you've got the coast so close by. Yeah. You mean from a light point of view? Because when you're near the sea, the light does change, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, you know from a, from a kind of a, a landscape yeah. perspective of actually your experience of the landscape. I think the the the, the Pennines feels more rugged yeah. than, than the Moors does. I think there's more... So you think the Moors are prettier? I do, personally, yeah. Uh, particularly in August when you've got the, the heather out. And the, you're talking like around the Gotham region and that. Yeah, area. all around yeah. the whole the whole area. I mean, it's mm. covered in heather that across mm. the whole thing a lot of the time, uh, that time of year. So I mean, you, you know, when you have a thing, do you ever have a place that you'd like to retire to when you when you, when you retire? For years and years and years, and the place I wanted to retire to was Robin Hood's Bay because I just love, I, I love the East Coast. Yeah. And I, I, I love that whole area and explored There's it. There's something fantastic about just being near the sea mm. as well, isn't there? Like, yeah. If you were, I mean, I've never looked, I lived about 15 minutes away from the sea, but to have the sea like on your doorstep where you can just step out and, and go and see that every day, brilliant. We nearly got killed at Robin Hood's Bay. You did? Yeah, I was there with the kids when the kids were really, really young. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, it was one of these freak storms that was coming in. And you know, right at the very bottom of the, well, obviously where, where the jetty is where they put the boats the out. The slipway, yeah. Yeah, the slipway. The water was really, really high up. And every now and again, there was a rogue wave that would come and wash up the street all mm. the way up. Mm -hmm. So sandbags and everything, because obviously they must get used to that. Mm. So we're all stood there, all watching this. All of a sudden, this massive rogue wave come in and wiped us all out. Mm. Really? And I'm stood there, yeah. Uh, I'm stood there with, with my two kids, and the kids must have been... Well, the ramp maybe, down to the beach is quite steep as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe five and six. Mm. But no, this wave came up and, and up the street and some. And of course, whew, Took mm. us all away. Mm. Even the, you know the massive, great big bins that are, that are um, the the council big bins next to the big, big next to the toilets. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was wiped out in the sea. So what happened? Did you managed to get hold hold of yeah, something. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, just grab the kids, were washed off their feet and all that sort of yeah. stuff. But uh, just goes to show, you know, it's, it, it, it's a very it, dangerous thing. It's a dangerous coastline. It's it really happened is. in it's happened in Whitby a few times where yeah. the sea's got so high that it's washed right yeah. down the high street. Mm. When you see it normally, it's like five meters above. <laughs> above the sea level so yeah it's incredible crazy. I don't want to believe that with Whitby because as you say with the way the way the harbour is and everything yeah. but with yeah, with high tides but there's a right next to Robin Hood's Bay there's a place called Boggart Hole I think it's called Boggart Hole 
I'm getting that from Harry Potter. Uh, and when we were there one <laughs> Christmas at Robin Hood's Bay, two ladies were swept away uh, New Year's Eve watching the waves, rogue wave come and took them out and they, yeah. died, they died. You, got to, you do have to be careful, don't yeah. you? Yeah. It's Very a, dangerous thing. It's a dangerous mistress, isn't it, the, the sea? It is. I mm. haven't got any of those in my portfolio that I'm desperate for. Mm. Waves smashing against lighthouses and rocks and stuff. You know, these most dramatic and amazing pictures that you yeah. see. I don't have one for my portfolio, and that winds me up. I haven't got anything dramatic and thingy, but I've got some beautiful film pictures from from Whitby Too taken much. taken twenty years ago. Well, uh, I, I think, it, it, and it was stunning. I think Roker Lighthouse. If you look at some of the images for Roker Lighthouse, they got some brilliant pictures there for um, obviously with waves smashing, and they just look tremendous. And I've I've made a note of that. And about two months ago, there was um, a hurricane that were blowing in from I think America. So I said to the wife, I said, oh, it's going to go right across. It's going to go up around about tea time. I said, so let's travel up. So we did. We traveled up because I wanted for my portfolio. We got there nice and early in the afternoon. We spent all day, pretty much had fish and chips to a breeze that was no more than 20 mile an hour. Yeah. There was nothing, absolutely nothing. And all the news was full of, you know, don't go out, don't go out. You know, the weather's going to be horrendous. It doesn't and necessarily it was, always happen when it's the bad weather at that point in time either. I was at, I was at Flamborough on the East Coast not so long ago filming a video and I've never seen the sea so rough like it was just right down the coast because I got the drone up as well it was just white wash about half a mile out to sea it was just these massive waves coming when the tide was in crashing up onto the beach like I've never seen before um, but there was it was still no wind whatsoever wow. so it was a great opportunity to get the get the drone up and do some really? filming yeah no, it was no amazing wind. There must have been some wind out at sea or the, yeah, the I mean, backlash of I think, of a I lot think of that's wind. what it was. I think there'd been some sort of storm mm. out over the sea that had then obviously I don't know, I don't know anything about how the sea works, but yeah. then it had swept it up and, some, it comes yeah, to the and coming into the coming into into the beach with such force. It was incredible. One of the most famous ones in the UK is a place called Porth Call in um, South Wales. Mm. And it's just up from Cardiff, Swansea, then Porth Call. And if you have a look at those online it's unbelievable. And you'll see you'll see hundreds of people just stood on the edge watching these waves smash up and you think to yourself, that's just so dangerous. Well, so are they much- on the rocks or are they stood on the rocks? No, they, 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 they stood on uh, like a jetty or something, right. but literally these waves, it's just to do with the formation and there must be, a, I don't know, a buildup of water and it just casc- and it just explodes mm. right across this uh, lighthouse and it's fantastic to, 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 to look at and you get some brilliant pictures but then it's just all these people mm. hundreds of people yeah, just stood there it. YouTube them yeah. honestly there's a place there's a place, called, a place called Port Leven in uh, Cornwall which is very very similar when, when the, you get the winter tides and the storm coming in isn't that Doc Martin? yeah that's right no no that's further isn't that north. filmed there? not Port Leven no it's, it's further north I can't remember the name of it is it? should do but I just recognise uh, that name. I, 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 I really envy the people who live down in Cornwall because there's some beautiful coastlines there. Mm. They're stunning coastlines. I've never been. Yeah, there's a place it's called so Kyn- far though, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It yeah. is. There's a place called Kynance Cove, which is not far from where we stay, and it's like another world. Um, isn't it strange? Or going back to honeypot locations. So if you said to me, "Let's go to to Cornwall," which I've never been before. So what's my natural reaction now? Then my natural reaction is going to be. I'm going to look online mm. to where I can go and photograph. And the chances are all the honeypot locations will rear their heads. That's funny because, you know. Isn't, isn't, isn't that how yeah. it works, though? We've so just, you go down, you take the honeypot locations, then the second time you go down, you try and avoid them and go elsewhere. Yeah, I think it depends on how much time you've got, doesn't it? Like, Because if you've got a week there and you know you've got a few days to yourself to do some landscape photography, then you can spend that time having a look around. But I think if you if you if if you've got one day... If you're with your family and you've got one day to do some landscape photography, yeah. you, you want to know, you want to be a bit more targeted in your approach, don't I, you? Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's because we've chatted about honey pot locations before. But mm. uh, uh, if you're going away, that's what you're going to do. You're going to go and shoot them, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Does anybody else keep a list I, on my notes? My notes is full. I think I'm on like page seven or something now. Of my notes are all full. Of just every now and again, you might see a nice picture and think that looks like a good area. I'm going to go down there and. So I'll make a note of it so I don't forget. Yeah. Did anybody I, else do that? I remember I it. I don't do it personally. I'll, I'll I remember sort of it, yeah. Try and remember it, but it's probably a good idea. Yeah. To to do it to note it down. I definitely I what I do do is if I find somewhere I will go on and I don't have time to shoot it, I'll go onto Google Maps and save that spot. Like because you can put like 
you can have favorite locations on Google Maps and just plonk it as a drop a pin. Yeah, drop a pin on it and save it as a local as a favorite location or something. Uh, so I do that. Um, but I do that with. So when I went to Finland, I wanted to I wanted to know where to go. So I didn't have long there. Sure. So I just I, I use Street View on Google Maps and just thought that looks like interesting a good spot. I'll go and explore that, and that's what I did and came away with some shots I'm pretty happy with. What I also was able to do with that is like find out where the parking spots were sure. on a road where you can't stop. I've used that. Like it's really, it's really yeah. especially because I was in a, a motorhome, like finding where the laybys were that I can actually stop in. Really helpful. Like a great way. To, imagine having that like 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Like it's the benefits of uh, modern technology, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I've done a similar thing. I'm going to go and shoot a location that somebody, somebody's picture inspired me to shoot. And I've gone on street view and look where I can mm. park. It's great. Uh, so, other than uh, like the North York Moors, is there another any other location that you would that, that's a favourite of yours? Or? Yeah, I mean the Lake District is a favourite of mine. I, I've kind of I've been there a lot over the last few years. I'm getting more and more interested in in just getting the sort of mountain top shots uh, because I mean I, I do obviously shoot the lakeside shots, which I enjoy still, but. I think like when we went out, I was kind of itching to be up top, up a bit higher, because mm. I think the the shots become more unique if you get in it with the seventy to two hundred on a few, some of the mountains and stuff. Then definitely you're getting more unique shots. I think the light often looks better from up there. So mm. you've, you've not, I'm not a massive fan of those massive contrasty shadows that the mountains cast across the valley mm. during the day. I'm not a massive fan of that. So I'd rather get something with some slightly softer light towards the end of the day mm. on top of a mountain looking down rather than uh, isn't it interesting that because you've mentioned what you're what you what you like in the shot and uh, uh, we're all different aren't we yeah. because I, that's why i love the lakes because it provides you with so many opportunities to shoot what you want because i do like those when the big clouds are rolling over mid-afternoon and you get the changes in the light mm. as the clouds are going over it's uh, and and also the beauty of the the weather changes so rapidly as well yeah. One, one thing I've been struggling with recently in terms of, we talked last week, didn't we, about trying to get get attention online, is that I will create an image of, say, the Lake District in, in bad weather when there isn't as much colour in the image. So, I don't know, a shot I took recently of Derwent Water, which is quite a blue-looking image. I absolutely love it. And there's some shots I've got from higher up as well where there's just not as much colour in it. But I think the the elements of the image work really work good shape, good composition, but then it just doesn't always get as much attention. No. It's the same with black and white, isn't it? We were talking about the other week. Mm. Like it just doesn't do as well online. I posted a black and white. My last Instagram image was a black and white and I think yeah. it's a nice shot, mm. but it just doesn't seem to get the attention, does it? That these high... The, the thing that get the attention is it, images. Is, it, uh, is, it, uh, is it Earth Picks or something underscore Britain? Uh, and all of the shots are really highly saturated whacking the shadows up dropping the, the contrast well. and the clarity, clarity. Right well. and it's like right in your face and i'm thinking who's choosing these pictures to put on but that's because that's my personal opinion i'll tell you what i really dislike about some of those accounts though is when they're all posting pictures of people where, uh, of, of pictures where the photographer is clearly in danger so like on a train track with a train coming towards them yeah or there was one i saw the other day where they were in some ridiculous position out on top of like this little kind of crag that they shouldn't have been on. Mm. All just for the sake of an image. And I'm just, I always reply just saying, well, where was the photographer stood? Mm -hmm. you know, like, what, and everybody, because you got like a thousand people saying, this is the best image I've ever seen. And then it encourages. This is with a massive steam train coming towards them. And it encourages oh, kids yeah. to go and do the same yeah, thing. Nonsense. There's been about three or four kids in the last month falling off cranes and stuff. Has there? Getting Instagram shots, hanging off by one hand and taking yeah. a picture. Don't do it, kids. Well, those famous thrill seekers last year, those YouTubers, three of them that died. Really? That made the uh, the national press last year. Yeah, what, I actually followed them. What were they doing? Um, again, just selfies in very dangerous places, and oh, the yeah. three of them stood on a cliff edge, and when? They, they all went over. All three of them. Yeah, all three. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and died. Yeah, um, yeah. It was all over the news last year. I can't remember the name of them, but um, oh god, I can look it up on my phone, but. Uh, but you can imagine exactly what's happened there. One's on, ooh, like that, and grabbed somebody else because that's a natural reaction. And they've gone. Before you know it, all three yeah. have gone. Mm. Yeah, and they've got like a million million plus subscribers. 
It's crazy tra- tragic I mean you do, you do you have really to be safe sad. don't you when you're going out into these places by yourself particularly you've got to be safe and not not go further than your skill will allow you basically mm. Mm. And not get caught out what's your uh, locations Mr Goff favourite location um, instantly north 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 Scotland, Harris and Lewis blew me away. Mm. Been there a few times now. That's absolutely blown me away. Um, How long does it take you to get there? Just because it's very different. Uh, we usually go to Harris and Lewis after our trip to the Isle of Skye. We go to Isle of Skye twice, twice right. a year. So it's quite literally a nine-hour journey to... Is it a ferry from is, Skye? Is then it, it's a ferry from Skye. Is, ferry from Skye is only an hour or so. Is it? No, sorry, it's an hour away from Skye. Yeah, on the yeah. ferry. So it's, take, it's about 10, 11 hours in total from here then, isn't it? Yes, so it's about yeah, you wouldn't to necessarily to need to catch a ferry from the Alice Sky to get to Harris and Lewis. That's so far from down south, though, isn't it? Like it if, is. <laughs> if yeah, you're living around, around London or the home counties, yeah, that is a long yeah. trek up there. Well, it, it is. How many, ta- how many hours does it take to get to London to here? Four, five hours? Yeah, four. Yeah, and then another eight hours. Yeah, but it looks to... a bit different in Harris and Lewis from London. Yeah, I mean, what could, would you rather you, photograph? You could fly to Stornoway, I guess. I think, you know? I think what they rather yeah. photograph is a landscape photographer. So, a photographer, excuse me. Obviously, Harris and Lewis and Sky, but there's some awesome street photography from London, isn't there? Oh, absolutely, yeah. The yeah. thing that puts me off is, is is the comments that people make that you guys have mentioned on podcasts. Is, is that people coming up to you and saying you're not allowed to film and stuff like yeah. that? So, put me off. In the newer areas, yeah. there's generally issues with uh, you taking pictures on the street because allegedly a lot of the air, uh, area is, is owned privately. However, you know, the, it's awkward because it's owned privately, but they have to give access to public. Mm. So, I mean, just going back to the Harrison Lewis thing, have you been lucky with the weather when you've been up there? Or every, time, it, every time. You've every been time. Every time. been really lucky. Just be interested because that, that's what puts me off a little bit. I mean, I've been up there and it was only an hour and a half from Sky. I've done the West Coast a few times, but is getting over in the ferry and then just be stuck there for three days with it absolutely yeah, hailing it down or has it got its own microclimate or is there stuff that you can shoot there when the weather's really bad but I, 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 yeah all of that you can mm. shoot up there definitely when the weather's bad but it's um you know god isle of sky it's just it's the big vistas the big waterfalls and stuff like that i i love i'd love to go to the isle of sky and spend more time away from it all and hike up to the mountains and go mm. to places where obviously tourists don't go and i'm guilty of that yeah but of course it's easier said than done yeah yes it would be good but you know it's a lot of money to go there yeah you can't take people down a workshop to go and shoot places you've never shot before otherwise you're not going to come across very professional well, you, could, you, could, you could sell it as that couldn't you like well, a scouting cool. experience and it'd be a bit more rugged and but i do that with my vlogging experience yeah. days that's what they're for but I, one one thing in a similar vein, I'd, I would, I'm desperate to do. Is it the North Coast 500? Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Around yeah. the north, the, the road that goes around the north to Scotland. Do mm. that in a motorhome, mm. like yes. for a week or something. Brilliant. That'd be, be awesome. I've been looking at the cost of doing that though, and it isn't cheap getting a motorhome for a week. Mm. Like, it really isn't cheap. Uh, I'd yeah, love to, I'd love to do that and just vlog the whole thing. And mm. I came close. I came close to doing part of the 500 last year. So it was decide, well, am I going to go up the West Coast again or I'm going to go up the East Coast and go around? And I did the West Coast, and I wish I'd have done the East Coast mm. uh, because the weather was terrible on the West mm. Side. But that's going to be on me. Um, my Land Cruiser's in for, for, for a service and getting stuff fixed on it because right. it's 25 years old. And as soon as it is, I get the back windows tinted, and then I'm going to use it as my overnight wagon, and I'm going to go up the East Coast right. uh, and do part of that for 500 yeah. I think the thing I like about the motorhome, though, it makes it more comfortable doing something like that. So you could go up there, take some pictures for the day, and then come back into relative comfort and sit at a table and edit your photos and stuff. I sure. Think it's kind of appeals. I, I wouldn't mind roughing it, but if I was going to do it for a week plus, you'd want How much did it cost comfort. for the motorhome, just to, as a matter of interest? Uh, do, you, do, you, do you remember? It was around a hundred and it was over a hundred pounds a night, something yeah. like that. You see, I've, this is where I've been talking up about the camper van and, and, and this that, and the other. And I thought because when I thought I'll do the east coast, I thought I'm going to miss the camper van and got yeah. rid of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to book myself in. I'm going to book myself into a premier inn up in Edinburgh or something, yeah. and then booking a B&B and then booking somewhere else and be in that comfort. And it's going to cost me. Uh, uh, um, you know 30, 40 quid a night yeah. 
Uh, and, and I suppose if you've got the camper van, but then if you put in insurance and everything on. The problem with the problem with staying in a, ho a hotel is that you've got to drag your backside out of bed to get actually then yeah. get to the location, don't you? Yeah. If you just park, oh, the, park yeah, walking eminently distance. convenient, yeah. Absolutely. If you just park walking distance from yeah. where especially, your sunrise especially, shot's going to be, especially in the summer, right. yeah. because your sunset then sunrise, you're only getting four or five hours sleep, yeah, and that's all. Well, so, you could you could get up at four o'clock. Do your sunrise and go back to bed for a couple well, of hours. Well, that's what I was going to say. That's what you can yeah. do in a van. You yeah. can't do that in a hotel. No, no you can't. No, yeah. you can't. No. But it'll be towards the end of the year I get up there anyway. Just before I digress ever so slightly, the three guys who unfortunately lost their lives were, were in the news uh, in July. So I think it happened in July last year. And uh, they're called High on Life. I'm sure some some people watching this or listening to this will actually know about this anyway. But uh, yeah, very sadly, that's... It's terrible, were they British? Terrible, terrible. Uh, well, they died in Canada. I, I'm not sure where they're from. Um, not that, that matters. But. No, no, not that it matters. But uh, yeah, is. high on life. Their 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 YouTube channel is still going, I believe. But uh, yeah, at the time they had half a million YouTube subscribers. But uh, yeah, it's just one of those unfortunate things, isn't mm, it? Definitely. But uh, no, I, I I have I have seen that. I've seen that myself. I saw that last year when I was in France. Guys, uh, you know, you go to a viewing point and there's a massive drop off, and clearly it's a viewing point with your handrails are really high and guys climbing over the handrails and hanging over while their friends are taking pictures yeah. and you know it's for their Instagram accounts. People do it though, don't they? My daughter was climbing up her bunk bed last night and she's like leaning backwards with two hands on it then she's taking one hand off and she's like, Daddy, look at me. Mm. And do you remember that scene in Suit? It's one of the Supermans where they're at Niagara Falls and that kid's like climbed over yeah, the railings and leaning back yeah. and then he slips and Superman says him. But yeah. kids do that kind they of do. stuff, don't they? Yeah, like, they do. and, and people don't grow out of it. No. Either. It's like, no it's... Not unless they fall over. <laughs> yeah. If they fall off the bunk bed and then they realise it hurts and they stop doing yeah. it. Yeah. Did you see, have you ever seen the, the wingsuit skydiving? Yeah, terrifying. There were, there were, I was listening to one guy who, who gave up doing it, one of the few people. But he said that every these wingsuits are incredible. That what they do now, they're like basically a wing that inflates mm. as you're flying. And he's saying that every single person that was involved in the development of that wingsuit is now dead. Mm. Wow! And including the one of the guys who, do you know, the guy that was James Bond that jumped out of the aeroplane at the Olympics. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's dead now. Is he? Yeah. Is he a wingsuter? He was. So, well, somebody died, died about a year and a half, two years ago, doing it. An English fella, so it might might be yeah. him. But um, it, it, it's terrifying, isn't it? There, there are guys who have jumped from aeroplanes for 25, 30,000 feet up, and they've landed without a parachute. Mm. No, have haven't. you seen that? Some of these videos on oh, YouTube. boxes. Yeah, either into boxes yeah, or British, in a giant, a, great big net. Guy, wasn't it? He's still alive. He's definitely still alive. Yeah, yeah, or in a great big net. You it's, think, it's, it's unbelievable. But that terrifying. was a race to be the first person to do mm. that. How much uh, balls must you, know, you have? Uh, these, Seriously, how many balls these, must you've you got, have? You've got to be scared to be courageous, though, haven't you? I don't think these, some of these lads aren't scared. Because if you if you get that wrong, yeah. you're dead. There's no ifs or buts. It's what there was a there's a film called Free Solo. And I it's watched a, it. Yeah, it's yeah. that guy that climbed Amazing. the Yosemite. Yeah, it's a Yosemite. It? Yosemite. Yeah. He climbed well, El, El the, Capitan, the, yeah. El Capitan yeah. without a rope. And yeah, free climbing. And yeah, I knew yeah. that, I, yeah. I did, but, but it's... Free solo is, is it, different. Is free it, climbing is still uses ropes, but un, unaided. Yeah. That, free what? solo is without ro ropes. It's, 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 yeah. I think free climbing is one of the same. No, but it's they, not. Free, free climbing is when they still climb the mountain, but without pulling on the rope, but they've still got a oh, rope right. in case they fall. Right. So that's free climbing. Right. Free solo is when they right. don't have a rope. But he, uh, he, 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 he is, is it about 2,800 feet or something that he climbed? Yeah, something like something that. Something crazy. Took him hours, and he was trying these holds and kept falling off. And he knew that he'd fallen off a number of times on these different holds, but still. And I watched that whole film, even though I knew he survived, with my yeah. heart in my mouth, thinking if one wrong slip, he's dead. One of the things that struck me about that is because the photographers were kind of part of the story, weren't they? In in Free Solo, and they 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 like filming him. And they're all absolutely terrified for him. And yeah. there's one bit where he's like having to get across this particular gap. Yeah. And there's a guy on the ground with a long lens filming him from the ground. And he can't, he turns away. Can't he's watch. Like, I've had it. He's just like, I've had enough of this. Yeah. And he's just turned around, like, because he can't look. Yeah. I mean, obviously he survived and stuff. He did. Incredible but stuff. But it was, well, he, he was saying goodbye to his girlfriend when he was going to go up. And it was like a last goodbye. Because she just, the poor woman, and she must have been supportive, just didn't know whether he was going to come back. Alive or I mean, not. he he's an intriguing guy actually because he definitely doesn't have a death wish. No, 
Like, because he was said, he, he, one of his climbing sort of mentors, he was talking about who was this guy who just thought he was a free solo climber and he, he climbed some of the hardest walls in the world, free solo, and he thought, I just need one good day to get up there. That's what he sort of said. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll practice and I'll practice and I'll just do it, wow. hoping for one good day to get up there. And eventually he died. Did he? Yeah. Right. But, like the, the, but this guy, I can't remember his name. I forget his name now. He, the guy in free solo. He's not like that. He... Because he, he he started as an attempt at one point and then stopped. He did because he, he wasn't happy. About yeah, he came down. On. So oh, he, he hasn't got up. a death wish. He's very. He seems quite sensible. Yeah, but then you still have to climb down. No, no you, you get, get to the, the top. top you're fine. You can, it's, yeah. it's El Capitan. You don't need to come back down again. No. But, or uh, they can come back down with a rope. Like, it was fascinating. It was interesting because Yosemite was the thing that inspired you to get into photography, yeah, wasn't it? Absolutely. I saw that on your, yeah. your feed. And, were, 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 was it just like an instamatic camera and you went with your mum and dad? No, I went with my friends uh, and his his mum and aunties. So we went over to America, did a, travelled around a bit, went to Death Valley and Las Vegas and stuff, but then went to Yosemite as well. And I bought this like it were in like a, a rest stop type thing and I bought a, a Kodak disposable camera but they had they, they were selling this one with like panoramic film yeah so I bought that one thinking I wanted to get some landscapes and then every we drove through Yosemite and I kept asking can you stop the car because I want to get a shot and I, I did I must have done that about 10 to 15 times it was like starting to wind them up <laughs> like oh we've got Ansel Adams in the back here <laughs> so and I'd never heard of it I'd never heard of him at that point so yeah. then I came home and did a bit of research and found out who he was and sort of got to know who he was and obviously was then happy with some of the images I got and that kind of sparked How old were my you? love of landscape photography, 16. 16. Point. And when you were there back in 16, was you know how if you go to El Capitan or wherever now, it's full of hundreds of photographers. Yeah. Was there, was there, can you think about were there many people shooting? No, not that I can remember. No. Like, no. It's landscape photography Would you go really back? does seem to have taken off. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I'd love to do a massive tour around America mm. at some point. Again, in like probably in an RV or something, and then get part of the RV up and go for a walk. And the stuff. beautiful and thing about America is, as I lived there for two and a half years, you can, you can yeah. get a big Winnebago yeah. and you can drive it, yeah, yeah. and you're not worried about uh, tight roads and stuff. Yeah, like and that. all the campsites are built for them, aren't they? Yeah, stuff they like are. that. I'd love yeah. to do that. Um, I'd quite, it'd be quite nice to do it with a guide, you know, or get try and get a guide in each local area to. Partly to keep you safe from the wildlife, mm. as much as anything, because um, that's I mean, we take that for granted in this country, don't we? Like you can you can explore absolutely anywhere in this country Grass and makes. be very sure that you're the biggest beast in yeah. that land. Yeah. Like, yeah, the biggest thing we've got to worry about in our landscape photography is ticks, isn't it? And getting yeah. Lyme disease, and some people are shooting, and there's like yeah. rattlesnakes. And Ada's not going to kill no. you, is it? No, no. If you're not I, when I went to Finland, I I, I asked. Some of the people that I was working with out there said, "Do I need to be worried about bears?" Yeah, and like, no, not really. Like, there are they're there, yeah. but they won't come anywhere near. Yeah. You won't have time you to go. think about it because they'll yeah. be bitten your head off. Yeah, and mountain <laughs> lions. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> got mountain lions in southern Spain as well, aren't you? Lynx. But nothing here. I think no. they're talking about reintroducing wolves and stuff back in Spain. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah, there's meant to be panthers down. I mean, in wolves aren't a massive threat to humans, are they? Like in in no. most in most areas. Mm. They'll stay well clear, and and also they don't. They're not going to. You're not their prey either. You're not, they're not no. instantly going to attack you. We just got the problem with the killer cows, haven't we? <laughs> killer Literally, cows. they yeah. are uh, killer cows. Killer cows. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we don't have anything really, do we? The, I, I sometimes imagine like because you, your mind plays tricks on you if you if you're walking in the woods alone and stuff, or you, it's at night and you you hear a noise and it's just a sheep, but it yeah. kind of sends these thoughts through your head. Yeah, you I reckon said. if if I was walking through the woods at night. And I knew there was bears in that wood. I would be crapping myself. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, the slightest noise. I mean, I mean uh, to, to be fair, like I think sort of serious outdoors people in the US, for example, that go out and about, they've always got a gun, a rifle with them, haven't they? Like, it's mm. fairly... I, you need it for protection. Yeah, I'd quite happily do that. Yeah, there's, pl there's plenty of things that want to eat you in America and uh, uh, other countries as well. Yeah. I think but, uh, mountain lions were probably too big from mountain lion, aren't yeah. they? But they can uh, get kids, yeah. like and yeah. dogs and cats and stuff. Yeah. Little, little cats, little savage. Yeah. <laughs> Scary, isn't it? I was, I was listening to this, listening to another podcast not so long ago, and the guy, guy on it, he was talking about cats, and he was saying like, it, do you, we have all these kids' stories about monsters in the in the closet, basically. Yeah. He's like, that's cats. Yeah. He said like when we 
we didn't have shelters like we do now. We lived in caves and stuff. Mm. Like we were worried about cats sneaking into our cave in the middle of the night and grabbing us. He's like, that's what the monsters are. It's cats. I'm, they, sorry, I'm, I'm come, lost. They come and eat you. Hey, what <laughs> cats do? Yeah, like little lions. cats. Or, oh, lions. lions and tigers ah, and right. lions and stuff. I when we, yeah, when we lived on the plains, like uh, yeah, they are yeah, the monsters course. that we're, we're afraid of. Of course, in the closet, I get you know. I was thinking of my little pussy cat coming in. Uh, yeah, that. When we lived in caves and you've got tigers and lions and stuff. Yeah, they'd have, they'd have the plains you. of Africa. And if you if you're in Australia, dingoes. Like, do you know when you go to a, you, if you ever been to a zoo and you I have. you go up to the. <laughs> And you go up to the lion cage or the tiger cage yeah. and you make eye contact with one of them. Uh, they're yeah. like... Dinner. But they're, Yeah, they're, they're not looking at you with any kind of sympathy or care. Yeah, they want to eat you. No. They're just like looking deep into your soul mm, yeah. and they want to eat you. They give you a taste like this. There's a, there's a video the other week and there's this little girl on a plexiglass and this lion's going like that and everybody's going, oh, isn't it cute? No, that lion is thinking that's dinner. Yeah. But if you, if you ever see like even a, a cat is no, a house cat is no different. No. Like if you see a house cat catch a mouse and it plays with that mouse... With absolutely yeah. no care in the world, does it? It's like torturing that I, little thing. I said to my the uh, savage my kids, I said, if you even though they're your cats, if you shrunk shrunk to the size of a mouse, you'd be eaten within two seconds. <laughs> That's what I love about cats. Though. <laughs> went, went, to, awesome. went to Blackpool Zoo and I was photographing um, this. Like these zoos, do yeah, this tiger that was just going back and forth. You could tell it really wasn't happy. It was just going back and forth. You know they. They get really uncomfortable and he's walk back and forth. Mm. And all of a sudden, it started walking away from me. And then it just turned and leapt at me. And I've never been so scared in all my life. There's no way it could have got me because I'm obviously at the right side of it. And I thought to myself, oh, my God. That could have if, been. If, if this fence wasn't here, that been I last, would now be that, dead. Yeah, that would be the, la the last thing you thing saw. You see. Yeah. 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 Seriously, I, I moved back. I moved back away from he the fence. He was thinking Welsh rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Well, he, it was really so, not so, happy. talking about those uh, what's it um, zoos have you got any uh, what do you normally shoot uh, what what are your settings for shooting animals at the zoo have you got well, any I don't go to the zoo all the time no <laughs> I'd, I'd like to I'd, I'd love to do a, a, a guide on shooting yeah. um, um, you know animals at a zoo because that has a challenge in its own right it does you're right to try and photograph mm. An animal in a zoo and make it look as if it's not in a zoo mm. is a challenge in itself. Mm. I'm not a fan. I'm no, not you're not a fan. At all. I'm not a fan. You're you know, wearing black and white, aren't you? No, no. You like something or you don't like something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I don't like zoos. Not yeah. at all. I don't. I don't. I, I, what, and the thing is, is that animals never do what I want them to do when I've got a camera in my hand. And it frustrates the heck mm -hmm. out of me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was taking a picture of a monkey once, right? It was really close. And it was just this close to me, that literally five feet away from me. And it, there was a cricket, and you could see it looking down, thinking, what's that? And this little cricket was, I have no idea how it got in there, this little cricket. And he picked this cricket up, and it was this close, and I could just see it, and it was looking. It's got this intrigue on its face, and it was looking. And it just went, <laughs> and just bit its head off. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. That was absolutely putrid. I remember when we it went. Was, ah! When we went, we remember God. those lions. We were running round and round in circles for the enclo the enclosure yeah. because they kept moving from one side to the other. Well, still that's, that's good, it. That's... I still didn't get a good picture of the lions. You did. I didn't. That's what they do. Yeah. I love it because we anthropomorphize, if that's the word, if the, all these animals where we make them into people and like bears, we've turned bears into like these fluffy little characters, like yeah. Winnie the Pooh or something mm -hmm. like that. But, yeah. like, but they're absolute savages. Oh, they're aren't they? like they're, yeah. they're like they'll kill cubs that aren't theirs and stuff. Yeah, and the lions or do like so. Birds of prey that with these like <sighs> knives attached to the bottom Talons. of their legs, yeah. and these eyes that are just like pure murder. Mm. In the oh. <laughs> they're dinosaurs. The they're worst, birds. Literally, like the worst thing you can ever watch is bears fishing. Have you seen bears fish? Because they'll grab a they'll grab a great big salmon and they'll just start mm. eating it yes, from the centre out With, <laughs> like this. The thing's still wriggling around. Yeah, yeah, not even killed oh, it. Oh, it's yeah. disgusting. We've become so disconnected from these things, though. Like, they, yeah, for good reason. Yeah, I mean, they're just not. Have you had any scary experiences while camping or out with photography with any animals? I know we haven't got any big things. Has anything scared you? No, I mean, I've been chased by cows once or twice <laughs> in my uh, in my yeah in a previous time. Not really since I've been doing photography. Uh, but how come around. every podcast is is based around cows? Because they're cows. terrifying yeah. animals. Yeah, they're these yeah. big things that don't really care about you no. and quite happily trample you. Yeah. 
It's like you. If weapons were legalised in this country now, there wouldn't be any cows left. You'd be going around shooting them all. It's like him, what? <laughs> what are you going to say, Adam? It's like you trampling a, an ant. Or yes. Something, or something. It's like I thought he was going to say you were like a cow. A bit scary. Yeah. Rats are a big problem. They're, um, they're quite bad. If you go to St Kilda, for instance, so if you go to Alice Sky, then you go out to Harris and Lewis and St Kilda, the next island across, you're not allowed to moor a boat there. Because the rats jumping off and killing because the bird population. Because if the rats jumped off, they oh, populate right. the island. Because yeah. you know Puffin Island in, in Anglesey, mm-hmm. then that used to be populated by puffins, hence the reason the name's there. Right. But rats have got on there now. Is that what it was? Yeah, rats really? have got on there now, and puff, puffins don't exist anymore Really. on that island. I think they're trying to um, reintroduce them and kill the rats, but yeah. It's like, it's because the rats, go, the rats go down the... The holes. They eat the yeah, chicks. They, yeah. yeah, they eat all the kids. It's like kids. Um, it's like grey squirrels, isn't it? They're taking over indigenous population yeah. of the Red Sea. It's a I bit scary, that. that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, very. That's just rats. I'd love to go to St Kilda, though. That's, that's probably top of my list of places to visit. Have you ever wondered how live animals die when they're eaten whole? Kingfisher, for instance, when they'll, they'll catch a, a bird or, you know, like a sand deal and mm. a whoop. And sometimes they're almost half the size of their own body. Yeah. And you'll see them, sometimes they'll struggle to get them down their throats, <laughs> but they'll they'll eat them. And this thing's still doing this outside its mouth. <laughs> yeah. What about all these anacondas that are taking over? The, 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 How do they die? Taking over Florida now. Have you heard about that? Mm. No. The the Everglades. Right. They've, they've got someone released some pets, pet snakes. Right. Like anacondas and um, like other oh. pythons and stuff. They were released years ago into the Everglades, and they've basically taken over it. They've eaten everything, so they're not, they're now got to the point where that some of these there's basically a war going on between these snakes and the crocodiles or alligators, whichever one it is. And they're, they're, they've eaten all the deer. They've eaten a load of all the small mammals. They've basically eaten. So the 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 place is just over <laughs> overrun by so, snakes. So in Florida, you've got old people. <laughs> snakes and alligators basically yeah. that's it yeah <laughs> uh, but, the, but that's what it is like some of those like there's pictures online or video online where they've literally swallowed a deer whole mm. and they're not are they, I think some do they squeeze it dead first I don't know what snakes oh, yeah, do yeah they like, could straight to well, my kid my, my son's got two snakes he's got a python and a corn snake really? in his bedroom yeah and it's fascinating watching because you feed him dead mice and when you feed him dead mice they're still the instinct is to lunge and then they wrap themselves around right, the right. dead mouse and they hold it for about three or four minutes before they start to oh, so, it. so they yeah, are yeah, killing they, they right. yeah. 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 yeah yeah but a whale they'll take thousands of fish at any one time, yeah. oh, don't gone, done. Yeah. That's it. But you're now, I don't. Uh, Swimming how do, about how inside do you the die? Whale, probably. How do you die? Uh, hydrochloric acid in the stomach, I presume, and, yeah. and suffocate. Oh, you want to have is a that, go? Is that how? Is that must be what happened to Captain Ahab? Is it? Yeah. Did he get like yeah. melted in where in Moby Dick's ass? I, I, I don't know. He died. Was it Jacob? They always get spat back out, Jonah. don't they? <laughs> spat back out. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's true we're really that, photography related this isn't it <laughs> oh yeah, yeah it's talking about getting out and about isn't it it's all getting out and about exactly it's great outdoors isn't it have you ever do you ever do wildlife photography and landscape at the same time no it's good. i love doing that on the same day like so it's, it's real challenge yeah you did it i watched one of your videos when i first started watching you at the isle of mull yeah and i think you went with a friend and you were shooting Sea lions and stuff, and otters, yeah. otters, yeah. And then also, oh, yeah, I've done, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, it's a proper good challenge. Like, it's an extra lens to take if I take like my 400 prime. Mm. Uh, I did that similar sort of thing I did with Morton as well. Mm. Like, it's a real challenge flicking, flicking back from like, uh, like having a wide angle landscape and then in getting in close with the uh, with the wildlife. It's, it's challenging in terms of mucking about with your gear because you always seem to have the wrong lens on as well, yeah. Uh, like, it's hard for the damn birds when you try and shoot those puffins and the fan islands. God, they come at you like bloody bullets. They're fast, mm. aren't they? Come at you like bullets. It's terrifying because they're on the extinction list, aren't they, puffins? Are they? Yeah, yeah they're, they're on the they're, extinction they're decline, list. Yeah, they? and the reason is, is you know the, the little sprats? Yeah. I think they're called sprats. You know, Sa- you come sand eels. They come sand out eels. and they've got th- loads yeah. of these little things in the mouth. Sand eels, yeah. That they're, they're disappearing uh, yeah, from uh, uh, the coastlines the water, because of the warm of the water, yeah. oh, right, okay. and they, they're starving to death, and they're trying to work out how they can, uh, what what they can do to try and preserve them. But they're on the endangered list. Two fascinating things about puffins. I'm sure you know this, but they spend I think ten months of their life out to sea, 
So they live at sea. Right. And then the beaks are only orange when they're having and laying eggs and having young. Right. Apart from that, it's grey. And are both, oh, are both, yeah. both, both the males and females got orange beaks? Um, yes, yes, they have because I think they're yeah, taking they in do, turns when it come when it comes to feeding them. Mm. They've taken in turns. I'm led to believe. Mm. When, I, when I've great. been photographing them at the Farne Islands, they've, they've all got coloured beaks. Orange. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know why that's I asked that because I've been to the Farne Islands. Yeah, I'm not yeah. photographing. That's because it's a breeding season. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So, yeah. what do they do? Float on the water? Then? Yeah. Well, I'm guessing so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, a, guessing so. I'm never a bit stupid. Really. Good swimmers, otherwise. <laughs> What they do is they've got a boat. They hire a boat, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they all lay on the boat. <laughs> Some baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like it's like sharks. They say the sharks. They always wondered because sharks have to keep moving. Yeah. And they wondered how they sleep, but what they do is they find a current and they plonk, plonk themselves there, and, and then the current it. goes through the gills. Yeah. That's cool. And they, don't, they didn't really know that up until about ten or fifteen years ago, when one of these wildlife films filmed them sleeping. Right. Amazing, isn't it? Do you know what we we don't. Realise how lucky we probably are. I mean, next week I'm at the Fan Islands and I'm really looking forward to that because we go every year. But then the week after that, I'll be looking forward to going somewhere else. Mm. Then the week after that, I'll be going to somewhere else and I'll be yeah. looking forward to that as well. Mm. Wherefore, some people who obviously work full time and maybe their passion isn't as, as great as ours, but they might go once a year, twice a year with a camera. I think, we seem uh, to do it every week. Even if it's just vlogging, I still look forward to to vlogging, don't you? Yeah, I think yeah. their passions there. I just think it's people's time, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always yeah. love doing it. I, I always love doing that stuff without the camera as well. Mm. I just love being in those those types of places. Mm. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it can take uh, some of the responsibility away when you haven't got your camera because yeah. you're not worrying about anything other than enjoying it. But you know, you, you're talking about where you'd like to shoot and wildlife. Something that I'd really like to do is underwater photography. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. Mm. And I've done a couple of two scuba dives in my life and I've really enjoyed both of them because it's like a different world. I'd like to see that vlog. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the good yeah, thing yeah, is? Like you couldn't, couldn't call me a gobshite because I wouldn't be able to talk. <laughs> yeah. I'd be all right, I think, because I do a lot of hand gestures when I'm talking. So. <laughs> I can't criticise you for that, Adam. I can't keep my hands still. Have we all covered our areas then? I think so. For, so. Me, for me, it's north. I want to do a lot more um, wild camping, but I also want to go down south and i desperately go to Ireland. Mm. Desperately want to go to Ireland. That was but there's all these things. But it's time and it's money, of course. It's it's money I, know, as well. I, I know it's a very famous location, but I'd st still quite like to shoot Dirtle Door. Yeah, I've, not, I've, not I've never, mm. never been there. Never yeah. I've been to the Jurassic Coast, but never seen the yeah. door. Yeah. I'd love to go and yeah. see it and take a photograph of it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's one of those go-tos, isn't it? Yeah. Have, uh, we, have we all covered that? I think we've all covered it, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, in a roundabout way. Uh, but isn't it brilliant? The different, the th we've got three different photographers here. With three different personalities, three different ages, and we've all come up with different places that we prefer shooting at. Absolutely. Cool. How are we doing? Right then. That's it, isn't it? Is that we, us? Is that a natural conclusion? Feels a like natural it. Conclusion. It led to a silence, didn't it? It led to a silence, which anyway, is unusual. Share us, and we'll see you next yeah, time. Thank us. you. <laughs>